Hey, it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about file transfer. Now we try to set up all kinds of incredible ways to do this. We've tried open source apps, we've tried FTP, SSH, SCP, rsync, I mean just there's literally dozens of amazing ways to transfer files but sometimes you just want something simple. I think that that is where Warp is going to come in. It is an open source application supported by the GNOME Foundation but it works on Linux, it works on Windows, it works on Android. You can push files, pull files, move files. It is really, really great. So I'm gonna show you how to get it installed and how to use it, not just from Linux to Linux, but also from Linux to Windows. And I'm gonna have somebody send me a file while we're doing this as well. I really think you're gonna enjoy Warp. I think you're gonna really like this application and I think it's gonna become one of those applications that's a go-to application for you to share files with people. This does not just have to work on your local area network. It can work over the internet as well. As long as you have an internet connection and so does the other person you're sending a file to, you can use Warp to send these files. Now, if files are too big, it will try to zip up the files to compress them to send them for you. So that's really awesome and really cool. Now, there's a level of trust that goes into sending and receiving files between people. You should never and I mean never accept a file transfer from somebody you don't know sending you a file that you don't know about. That is a dangerous, dangerous practice. This should be used for you in your business. This should be used for you if you are supporting clients and those clients already know you and have faith in you and trust what you are sending them and you can trust what they might send back to you. This is for you to use between you and a colleague at your work. This is for you to use between you and your family, you and your friends, people who trust each other. If you don't trust somebody, if you don't know them really well and well enough to know that they're not gonna send you something really bad, and honestly, my family, I love my family, but my extended family, they don't know enough to know that something could be really bad to send me, so this is not something I would use with them. This is this is just not the tool, but with my family here in the house, I know that I can trust that they're going to send me the right things because I have them set up on Linux. I have them taught. I've, I've taught them how to be more safe about what they're passing around. So please take this episode with that bit of wisdom I'm trying to share with you. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there going, you should never do this. I get it. I believe that there is a reason and a space for trust in this world, and I want to have that trust in the people that I feel and believe I can trust. Now, if you have other ways that you'd want to handle these kind of things, that's fine. You should absolutely have a virus scanner checking to see if there's viruses on the files. Even if you're running Linux and you say, I can't get viruses, I'm on Linux, that's not really true, but I get it why people say it. You should still be scanning files to make sure you're not passing those things along to somebody who's not on Linux. So it's really important for us to be good stewards of the data that we share. That all said, I think this is going to be a really cool application. I think it's going to be a great go-to application. And for just quickly sharing files from machine to machine, this is going to be a really great application. Everything is encrypted. That's the best part. It's all encrypted. Nothing special you have to do to get that done. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it, thank you again, let's get started. Now to get it for Linux, you're going to go to FlatHub. Now if you don't have FlatHub already set up, I understand. It's not hard to get FlatHub set up on your Linux distribution, but it depends on your distribution. So all you need to do is just, just search very quickly for get FlatHub on and then whatever your Linux distro is. It's going to give you probably two to three command line commands to run. Get those set up so you have FlatHub working. Flatpak. Flatpak is what you want, not FlatHub. Put Flatpak. Flathub is the place where you find Flatpaks. I apologize. Search for get Flatpak set up on my Linux distribution and then run those commands. That'll get it going. Now I'm on Linux Mint. It came with Flatpak already set up and installed, so it's really great. I'm going to show you that there's two ways to do this depending on your distribution. If you're on a distro that already has Flatpak installed, 
you can just use their software center. So if I go here and type in software center, I'm, I'm using the latest version of Linux Mint that I could get uh, as of June 2023. Um, it's going to open up. So here it looks just like the GNOME software center, right? Except I can type in warp and it's going to show up pretty quickly. And it's this one here. Don't be fooled. Don't get warpinator. This is not the one I'm talking about today. I'm talking about warp, but it's right here and it shows me it's on Flathub. Now these are also on Flathub. Just don't be fooled because these are similar, but I don't know these. I haven't checked these out. This is the one I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's a GNOME Foundation type thing, so I really have much more faith in it right now. Um, so just be aware of that. But you can install it from here. Graphically, just click and then click on install. It's going to come up and done. It'll be done in just a minute. The other way to do it is open up your terminal and an emulator here. And once that opens, there we go. I can just do... Uh, I can go grab this command that they've got here on their website and right here copy and then right here I'm just gonna go in and paste and it's gonna go get it it's gonna say hey here's the things that it wants to do I'm gonna say yes it's gonna tell me here's all the things it's gonna install or update again I'm gonna say yes that's fine and it's gonna go through that process it's very quick usually it just depends on the size of the application you're getting but it's not hard to install now again if you have the graphical user interface that's awesome you can do that to get this installed as well so this is the install on Linux, and we're going to go through the install on Windows in just a minute. All right, that installation is complete. So if I just go here and I type in warp, it's going to pop up. There it is. Now it comes up on two different screens for some reason, but it comes up kind of with this starting screen first. So it's like, hey, welcome to warp. I'm just going to hit next. Here's an introduction. So get started using warp. And then here it is. Now this is the interface that I see. I've already installed this on Windows 10, so I'm going to show you that, and then we'll go to Windows 11 and go ahead and go through the installation process of how you get Warp on Windows and get it running. So I know that this looks a little bit confusing, but I'll show you what's going on. What I've got here is I've got my Wacamole uh, RDP session open to a Windows 10 virtual machine, and I've got Warp installed on it, so you can see that it doesn't come off of the screen there. So I'm going to try to drag that back down. This window of warp on the left side is actually running on my Linux desktop that I'm recording everything on. So you can see that this looks basically like the same interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the select a file dialog. And I'm just going to go to, I don't know, let's go to documents here, find something fairly benign. Um, yeah, I've got these two files that I use for some of my assets. So I'm just going to select this one here. So it creates a QR code. Now, I'll blur this out whenever we create the video, but you'll be able to scan this code with your Android phone and get this to start doing the transmit. Uh, the other option is you get this code here at the bottom, and you'll be able to use this code to basically receive the file on the other side. So remember that this is the window on my, on my Linux machine. I can take it out of here anytime. So I'm trying to send it to this Windows machine here in the background. So I'm gonna copy this code so I need to get that over here on this Windows machine. So I'm going to click on Receive. And I want to try to paste that code in there, but of course I can't paste across because that would have been too easy. Alright, so we've got the active transfer happening, and of course the system says, hey, do you want to allow this? So I'm going to allow it to, to access my network. I'm going to say Allow Access. And then it asks if you want to accept the file transfer. So you can even see what type of file it is. In this case, it's TP-Link firmware. I'm just going to accept. And then it says file transfer successful. So you can open the file or you can show it in the folder where it got transferred to. And here we go. It is now on my machine. So I sent that from my Linux machine to my Windows machine right here. Now, of course, getting the code to somebody else can be a trick. But they also have a link. So we may try that one as well. Uh, I want to make sure that I can actually pass that link over a little bit easier. So I'm going to have somebody send me a file to my Linux machine and then send me the link from that Linux machine as well. All right. So I had my helper send me a link for a file that they're trying to send to me. So when you want to receive a file, again, you just click on the receive side. And it sees that I already have a code from the clipboard. So I can just, it, it just pasted it in there for me, which is fine. Um, saves me a little bit of effort, but they sent me the code, so I'm just gonna hit receive code, and it says connected peer. Do I wanna accept the file transfer? So again, I can inspect the file, I can say accept, and then I can open it up in the folder, 
and see what they sent me and it's an image here which is pretty awesome so this is a really cool way to transfer files very quickly. Now this is all going across my local network. I don't really have a machine out there to test with today that would send files back and forth across the internet uh, from anybody that I would trust to do that with me right now. But everything indicates that it should work across the internet as well. So I'm gonna do one last test and I'm gonna disconnect my machine that I'm recording on from the network and I'm gonna connect to it using my phone. Uh, not on my Wi-Fi, but connected to the cellular network as a tether. And then we'll try to transfer a file um, that way. So we'll see how that works. And when I come here, it's going to paste it automatically for me. Now, I am connected this time through my phone, so I'll show you down here. Currently connected to my iPhone. My iPhone, you'll have to take my word for it, is not connected to my Wi-Fi. So this is going through the internet over the cellular network. I'm going to hit accept. It's saying connecting to peer. You saw it took a little bit longer that time, but I'm going to say accept. Receive the file and I can show the file in the folder and we've got a picture here of the moon phases so pretty awesome and that worked over the internet as well nothing special I didn't have set anything up I just installed warp on the two machines that we wanted to use and we're able to send files back and forth using that code so you've got to have some way to get them the code and then they've got to input that code and you can send them a file same way if they want to send something to you and you want to receive it so if the file size is bigger than the limits, and I'm not sure what those limits are, it will try to zip that file up and send it to them in a zipped format, compressed format, to make it able to send that. So that's one of the most recent uh, additions that they've made, which is pretty great. So there is active development going on on this. I think it's really awesome, and I think it's great that you can send files between different operating system types. You can even send it to your Android phone and back. Pretty cool. I'd love to see somebody implement this for iOS, uh, being an iPhone user. Uh, you know, it'd be great. Also, macOS is, is not included right now, so it'd be nice to see the, the client kind of built out for macOS, but really awesome. I think this is a great way to send files back and forth. So one more test that we just tried out is started sending a pretty large file. As you can see, it's about 75 megabytes, and I realized I was still on my cellular connection, so I said, oh, wait, hang on. So I went and turned on my wired connection, turned off the Wi-Fi, turned off the cellular connection, and you can see it's frozen, so it did not switch automatically to the other connection, and it looks like it's stuck, so I'm just going to cancel it. I'm going to say abort the file transfer. Let's see if it can do it. There we go. So I'm just going to pick that again now that I'm connected back to my wired network and run through that process again. So if you ever do try to switch networks, you may run into that. So just be aware that switching the network doesn't seem to work uh, halfway through. So if you get a, a network drop or a disconnect, you may have to resend the file. You probably want to make sure you're on a pretty stable connection when you try to send anything. As promised, in order to get this into your Windows 11 or Windows 10 system, you'll need to go to their GitLab page. They don't really keep it on their just uh, regular download area. So again, Flathub, Flatpak is available for Linux distributions, but for Windows, you're going to want to go here. You want to click on the CI CD right here on the left. That's going to bring you to this page, and you'll see their, their CI CD pipeline basically that makes their different distributions. And up here at the top, you'll see these tabs. You want to go to the one that says Finished. When you get there, you'll go over here to the Download. When you click on that, you'll see different options. And you want to get the one that says Windows Archive. So I'm going to click on that one. You'll see that it downloads up here. Let's just go to our regular Windows Explorer here. And we'll go directly to Downloads. And right here, we're just going to right click on this thing. And we're going to do Extract All and we'll just hit extract once that finishes you'll have a folder like this just click into the folder and right here at the very top in this case I see the warp executable now if you don't see it you can scroll down it may be in alphabetical order but you can just double click this it's going to give you the standard warning so you have to decide whether you trust this application to run or not but if you do click on more info and then run anyway and you'll see kind of the startup wizard here just click on next and continue and you'll be at the regular warp window and now you're ready to use warp on windows with anybody that you need to with other machines that you own anything like that to send files back and forth so i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did like subscribe tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us and i'll talk to you next time
It's your open source advocate and I'm back and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.